So we all know choosing protection gear, it's tough. You need a helmet, boots. Do you need a knee brace? Maybe a neck brace, roost deflector? We're gonna answer those questions and more in today's protection gear guide. All right, everyone, thank you for checking in. I am Chase, and today, as you can see, we are talking all about protective gear. This is a category that can be very difficult to choose, especially if you're just getting started out, you're looking to get fully set up for the first time, or maybe you're an experienced rider and you're looking to just change out or upgrade some of your gear and you're not sure what you should do or how much money you should spend. It's very difficult, it's a lot harder than people think because there's so many different categories and choices within those. You know you need a helmet. How much money do you spend on a helmet? Do you want an entry level, mid level, a premium helmet? What about boots? How much money do you spend there? Do you want a knee brace or maybe just a knee guard? Roost deflector or do you want something CE certified? Do you need a neck brace? A lot of different questions that a lot of riders ask themselves. So today we're gonna help you out with those questions. We're gonna go through, we're gonna talk about each category that is up here on the table and we're gonna rank those categories in the order of that we think are most important. And we're just gonna talk about what you get at dif different price levels and kinda help you know where we feel you should be spending most of your money when you're looking to get set up the first time. But I would also love to hear your feedback. How do you decide where to go as far as protection gear goes? How do you choose within those different categories? That's gonna help other riders out who are looking to do the same thing. So without further ado, let's kick it off with category number one, which is helmets. So we all know helmets are priority number one. This is the most important piece of safety gear that you're going to be wearing. And we have over 25 different brands of helmets to choose from. So yes, can be hard to choose. However, here's what I recommend. Buy the best helmet that your money, that your budget allows you to. If you only have a little over 100 bucks or around there to buy a helmet, that's totally fine. The good news is there's good quality safe helmets at a great price point. But as we're about to show you, as you spend more money on helmets, you're gonna to start to see things like different shell construction, premium materials there, better venting designs, and premium safety features. So you wanna have confidence that the helmet you buy is gonna protect you. So I say just spend the most money you can. You know that shiny exhaust can wait, that new riding gear can wait. Invest in your helmet and your head safety first. So up here on the table, starting out we have a MAV4 with MIPS from MSR. This is a great helmet, it's comfortable, I've ridden in it, and it only costs a little over 100 bucks, so it's very affordable. And inside here, you've got your EPS liner. Now EPS stands for Expanded Polystyrene. It's a material that they've been using for decades in helmets, and for good reason. It's lightweight, but it does a great job of absorbing impact. But you also, in the MAV4, have the MIPS liner system. The MIPS is a premium safety feature that you see in very high-end helmets that are a lot more expensive, and you're getting that for just over 100 bucks. So it's a, it's a great helmet. And remember, too, that we have product spotlights on almost every helmet that we sell. So if you find a helmet you like, watch the product spotlight. That will give you all the information to help you decide if that is going to be the best helmet for you. But moving on from the MAV4, you have the M5 from Alpine Stars. Now you're in that two to $300 range. With the MAV, or excuse me, with the M5, it's quite a bit lighter than the MAV4. In my opinion, it's gonna have a little bit better venting design. And what's cool now is you have a five-piece EPS liner, and those different pieces are different densities to help maximize the impact absorption and also keep the helmet lightweight. So you're getting a little bit more as you spend that money. Moving up even farther in the price range, in that four to $500 point, you have something like the Formula CC from Fly Racing. Now you can see you've got a really good venting design, a ton of cutouts in the EPS liner. They have their energy cells by Rheom, which are fantastic. They help with rotational energy, your, liter your linear impacts. You've also got something like the Conehead EPS liner inside here. It's a rock solid helmet, a lot of cool safety features. Again, you gotta watch the product spotlights to learn more about it, but that's what you would be spending your money on. And then lastly, you have something like the 60 ATR1 or the ATR2, which is considered to be one of the most premium helmets that is out there. 6D, they blew the market away when they came out with this helmet because they have their omnidirectional suspension. They have two liners on the inside that are separated by isolation dampers that move in six degrees of motion. Pretty unique what 6D has done. But again, that's where you're spending that premium price is on premium safety features. And one other aspect that I think is cool is that something like the 6D with their ATR2, the helmet is rebuildable because this is important. No matter what helmet you buy, if you have a big crash, you wanna make sure that you inspect that helmet to make sure it's not damaged. There are some helmet manufacturers that will let you 
send your helmet back to them and they will inspect it for you to make sure that the EPS liner is not compromised. But the reason it's important is because EPS, once it has been crushed, it doesn't return its shape, so it's not gonna absorb impact as good the second go around. So no matter what helmet, if you do feel like you possibly damage it, inspect it, get rid of it if it is, and get yourself a new helmet. But priority number one is helmets. After you've gotten the helmet that you're after, next up, you're gonna find some boots. So once you've chosen the helmet that you like, now you gotta talk about boots. And boots are like helmets where I say, you know what, invest as much money as you can to get the most protection possible. However, there is a difference here. When it comes to boots, you really gotta ask yourself a couple questions. One, you gotta be honest with yourself, what type of riding that you're gonna be doing and your skill level. And the reason that I say that is because if you're an entry level rider and you're not going at those faster speeds yet and you're not maybe jumping yet, then you can get away with spending a little bit less money on a pair of boots. For example, you have something like this ARC. It's about a hundred bucks, it's very affordable, it's comfortable, I've actually worn these before, and it offers a fair amount of support for the rider's ankle. It would be great for an entry level rider who's just working his way up. Now as you work your way from the ARC, you have something like the Tech 7. So maybe you're getting a little bit faster, you're riding those faster speeds, you're jumping more, you're gonna be racing competitively. Something like the Tech 7 would be great. You know, you're in that three to four hundred dollar price range, and what you can see now, is you're gonna get better construction, premium materials like leather, microfiber, you know, more robust buckle design, but also with the Tech 7, you're gonna get an upgrade in protection and support. You'll notice that on the medial and the lateral side is you have a pivot system, and that does two important things. It helps with the flexibility of the boot, but also gives more support side to side, so more support for the rider's ankle, and just looking at it, you can see there's a lot more hard plastic on here, so more impact protection for the rider as well. Now, as you work your way up from the Tech 7, you get into that premium range of boots. You've got something like the SG12 or the Tech 10 from Alpine Stars. With the SG12, this is known to be one of the most durable, bomb-proof boots that is out there. You've got premium leather construction. I ride in the SG12s a lot. I love this boot. It's comfortable. It's got excellent support for the rider's ankle. There's memory foam around the ankle area, so it's very comfortable when you put these on. And you've got something like the Tech 10. Again, another premium boot that a lot of top-level riders wear. With the Tech 10, you've got amazing support for the ankle. I'm gonna say it right now, in my opinion, I think the Tech 10 gives the best impact absorption of any boot that is on the market today. On top of that, you have an inner ankle brace system that acts as an ankle brace that goes along with the shell. There's a lot of great premium safety features that you're gonna get in these two boots that you wouldn't see if you were to spend less money. But like I said, you gotta be honest with yourself. If you're not at a level that requires to have a premium boot, you don't have to spend that much money, but if you can, I would say yes, get the best boot that you can afford. Last thing I do wanna say with boots, is that as you work your way up to the more premium options, you'll notice that boots start to get a little bit stiffer when they're brand new. And so it just takes a little bit more time for those to break in. So if you're an entry level rider, you're getting a little bit better, you're working your way up to a premium boot, it might take a little bit more time to get used to because of how stiff they are. You just gotta be patient and wait for those to break in. All right, next category is knee guards and knee braces. This is a hot topic. Now look, my opinion, any sort of impact protection or knee protection is better than nothing. I've seen, and I think this is crazy, a lot of riders riding without any sort of just impact protection whatsoever. If you've ever smacked your knee on your handlebars or you've gone down in a crash and hit your knee on the ground without impact protection, you know how bad it hurts. And I'm not talking about ligament damage. I'm talking about you could hit your knee out so hard on the ground, you could possibly break your kneecap, have a really bad injury. So anything's better than nothing. Now, if you can't afford a knee brace right away, which we're gonna talk about, you can always start with the knee or shin guard and then work your way up as you save your money. For example, you got something like this Fox Titan. Inexpensive, and it's gonna offer good impact protection for the knee as well as parts of the shin. As you work your way up a little bit in price, you have something like this Liat Dual Axis, which is gonna give you the same impact protection, but you'll notice on the sides it has more lateral support, so a little bit more support for the rider's knee. Now, as you work your way up from there, you're gonna start spending more money and you're, you're gonna to start to get into that realm of knee braces. I get a lot of riders who ask, is a knee brace worth the investment? Should I spend that much money? In my opinion, yes. Knee braces are meant to be proactive, not reactive. And there's a lot of riders who wait till they have a knee injury before they go and make the investment, spend a little bit more money on an actual knee brace. And you have to remember a knee brace guards against not only impacts, but also against damaging the ligaments in the knee. I'm talking about the MCL, the PCL, the meniscus, the ACL, you know, and those types of injuries have a very long recovery process 
And when you look at medical bills, if you were to tear a ligament versus the cost of a knee brace, you honestly can't even compare the two. So in my opinion, invest in a set of knee braces, you will thank yourself down the road. Another thing that a knee brace can protect you from that a knee or shin guard can't is rotational injuries. A lot of injuries to the knee, to the ligaments happen from rotation versus just hyperextension. That's another big benefit when you step up to a knee brace. What's nice about knee braces is you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get into one. You don't have to spend six, seven, eight hundred bucks. You have something like this Z frame from Liat, which is gonna go offer good support for the rider's knee. You've got a hinge system. You can adjust the hyperextension lockout. In other words, you can stop it. You can make it to where it locks out before you hit straight up and down. And you've got great impact protection and you're gonna be under 500 bucks. As you work your way up in price, you're gonna see other knee braces that are just built with different materials. For example, you have this asterisk carbon cell one. This is a knee brace that I wear, I love it. It's very low profile, it's a carbon fiber chassis, it's very lightweight, you've got a great hinge design, and again, you can adjust the hyperextension stop on this one as well. And then you have something like the Pod K4 2.0, which is another knee brace that I've worn, which is awesome, and they use uh, you know, multiple compounds in the chassis, they have their synthetic ligament hinge system. There's a lot of great knee braces, all at different price points, and do yourself a favor, watch the product spotlights to learn all about them, because they're all unique, they all have different characteristics that some riders might like. We also have our buyer's guide that you can watch to help you decide which one might be best. But like I said earlier, start with the near shin guard if that's all you can afford, and as you work your way up, my opinion, invest in a set of knee braces, protect from those twisting injuries and the rotational injuries, as well as the impact protection as well. All right, next category is upper body protection. Now in this category, it's like knee braces and knee guards where I think anything is better than nothing. And you have to ask yourself in this category, really what are you looking for? You know, obviously if you're riding on a track, you need roost protection. If you've ever hit, been hit with roost from a dirt bike before, you know how bad it hurts. Or maybe you're a trail rider, you're looking for protection from the branches or the rocks, debris, or you want impact protection. How much protection do you want? Do you want minimalistic, low profile? A lot of things to ask yourself. So we'll show you what we have on the table, just to kind of show you what you have at different price ranges and help you decide what you feel is going to be best for you. So first up, you have something like the MSR blockade. The blockade is great, it's very popular, it's inexpensive, you got good coverage front and back. It's not the most low profile option out there, but you could certainly wear this underneath your jersey, but this is just gonna be for roost protection. It's not CE certified for impact, so that's something that you'd want to consider. But it's a great option, inexpensive. From there you have something like the Fox Race Frame. Fox Race Frame for me is what I've been using for a while now. I'm a big fan because of how low profile this is. If you were wanting something very minimalistic that you could wear underneath the jersey that's not gonna to be too obvious that you're wearing something, this is a great option. But again, this one, like the blockade, not CE certified for impacts. Now from here, which is about the $100 mark, as you work your way up, that's when you're gonna to start to see chest protection. You can see CE certified impact protection. For example, Fox does make a version of the race frame that is CE certified for impacts, but you're gonna spend more money. Now, here in front of me, I have the Liat 4.5 chest protector. You're going up in price, but you're getting a lot more coverage, and now you're CE certified for impacts. And when it comes to CE ratings, you're gonna see CE level one, CE level two. This is all you need to know, that the higher the CE rating, the more impact protection that it's going to offer. With the 4.5, you got CE level two in the chest and the back, and then you have shoulder protection, which is CE level one. So a lot more coverage than the race frame that we just showed you. And then from here, if you wanna take it up one more notch, you've got something like a full body jacket. This is the Bionic Tech V2 from Alpine Stars. This is gonna give you the most coverage possible. So if that's what you're after, is the most upper body protection possible, a jacket's the way to go. You're gonna have protection in the front, as well as the back, that's gonna be CE certified. You've got shoulder protection. You're also gonna get elbow protection with a body jacket as well. So full coverage, that's the route to take. Now, last thing I will point out real quickly is neck brace compatibility. This is a very common question. Here's some advice. That's why we have our fit guarantee, first of all. If you, have a, if you buy one of these and you already have a neck brace, you can try the two on together and make sure they're compatible. If you don't feel like it is, again, you can exchange it. You can try it for a different one. But if you're maybe picking up a roost deflector, chest protector, and a neck brace at the same time, what I would recommend is stick with the same brand. So if you buy a Liat chest protector, get a Liat neck brace because they're always going to be designed to work with each other. Same goes for Alpine Stars. Again, use our fit guarantee. But in this category, a lot of different options. Ask yourself how much coverage you're looking for. Do you want impact protection? And that's going to help you out. 
All right, last category, neck braces. Now with neck braces, it's a little bit of gray area here because there's a big debate out there. Some people think that neck braces work. Some riders don't think that they're necessary. Here's what I say. If you feel like a neck brace is gonna give you more protection and make you feel safer as you're riding, then by all means, make that investment. What a neck brace is designed to do is just limit the range of motion for the rider's head and neck and take that energy and disperse it through the neck brace and then into the larger parts of the rider's body. There's a lot of great options out there for neck braces. And here's what I say if you're shopping for one. We have our buyer's guide. Again, watch that to see all the different features about these. But you have great options like this one from EVS. It's inexpensive. It's comfortable, it's lightweight, but as you work your way up in price from the EVS, which is around the $100 mark, something like the 3.5 from Liat, or the Atlas Air, or the Liat 5.5 or 6.5, what you see as you work your way up is more adjustability. And when it comes to a neck brace, every rider is shaped a little bit differently. Maybe you're wearing this with a roost deflector. As you get more adjustability, it just allows you to fine tune the fit just a little bit more to get it exactly how you want it. So that's really kind of the big difference you see. But aside from that, they're all great options. Last thing I will touch on with neck braces before we let you go is a lot of riders ask me, do these inhibit or limit the range of motion when you're riding? I've ridden in neck braces before, and I'll tell you from my own experience, that when, you're ha when you have these on and I'm riding personally, I honestly almost forget that it's there. I hardly notice it. It doesn't limit my range of motion whatsoever when I'm riding. So that's a concern you have. I think you can just throw that out the window. But again, if you feel like a neck brace is gonna offer you more protection, then it's a great piece of equipment to have. All right, everyone, so there you have it. That is our protection gear guide. Hopefully, if you're shopping for your protection gear for the first time, this video has given you a good starting point, kind of helps steer you in a good direction, or maybe you're just looking to upgrade your equipment. You now know what might be the best option for you. As always, we'd love to hear your comments and your feedback, so make sure to leave that below. To see all the gear that we talked about today and to start shopping for your next setup, it's this simple. You can click on the link in this video or just head over to RockyMountAtvMC.com. Remember, orders over $75 ship free. Get subscribed to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel if you haven't already because this is all we do. We are the best place to go to if you're looking for product information, product reviews, how-to videos, bike builds. We have all the best content, so you got to get subscribed and stay up to date. I am Chase, and we'll see you on the trails.